Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> Greetings, I am Lord Bruticus, and this is Dark Side Chat number 13. He is an actor, a singer, songwriter, producer, director, and is one of the most talented people I have ever met. He is recognized by Star Wars geeks as the man in the Ewok Gospel. His name is Andrew Zilch, and he is my telephone guest this time on the Dark Side Chats. Well, hello, Andrew, and welcome to the Dark Side Chats. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It seems like you have a lot of hats. You yeah, I do. I do a bunch of different things. It says on your website, andrewzilch.com, you've also done work on Spider-Man 2, Minority Report, and AI. I was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, I spent about, I would say, eight, eight or nine years working in feature film production as a production coordinator, uh, basically dealing with a lot of the logistical stuff behind, uh, you know, helping make studio films. And I got fortunate enough to work on a bunch of kind of cool movies, uh, a couple Spielberg films, we got to, you know, sort of see him work and uh, to watch that sort of process, as well as like Spider-Man 2 and, and a couple other kind of bigger budget sort of things, so it's kind of like, uh, sort of like film school, watching real professionals <laughs> sort of work, and uh, it was cool to, you know, have a job that allowed me to do that. Well, in the Star Wars geek community, uh, <laughs> geeks like I readily recognize you as the guy in the Ewok gospel music video, and uh, not only as the uh, guy that's uh, singing in the video, but also you're the guy that wrote the Ewok gospel song. Yes, sir. What is it about Star Wars that influenced you to write a song about the Ewoks? <laughs> well, um, you know, I've been a, a Star Wars fan my, my entire life. I was actually born in 1977, uh, the summer uh, that Star Wars came out, and ever since I can remember, uh, you know, my parents, uh, you know, started you know, bought, bought me, like, my first Star, uh, Stormtrooper action figure, and from there it just sort of grew into, you know, uh, an obsession with collecting and with uh, the films themselves. And, um, you know, fast forward, you know, 25, 30 years or something, and I'm, I work for a group of um, internet content makers called Runaway Box, and uh, we make comedy videos, uh, obviously, for the web. And I was, I sort of, it dawned on me that it was the 25th anniversary, uh, 2008 was the 25th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. And I hadn't noticed that anybody, you know, people, people weren't really making sort of a big deal out of that, which I kind of thought, you know, there should be a big deal made out of that. And so I pitched an idea of, you know, doing some sort of Star Wars uh, Return of the Jedi tribute um, to the silver anniversary, you know, of episode six. And so uh, I, I started thinking about, you know, different ways to approach that and, you know, going on the message boards and seeing what people were talking about. And inevitably, you know, whenever there's a discussion about Return of the Jedi on message boards and, and so on, people bring up the Ewoks and it, it goes into a debate about, you know, whether the Ewoks were necessary, whether they were, you know, just put in for the kids or, you know, whatever. And I, I just kind of, I found a lot of humor in that discussion and that debate because some people really get worked up about that. And uh, so I decided I would make a video from the perspective of a guy who really wants to defend the Ewoks and, you know, you know, give them a good name. Well, you must have connections in high places. How in, the, <laughs> how in the galaxy did you manage to get Billy D. Williams in your video? Well, luckily, um, you know, I work for this group, Runaway Box, and um, we have producers who uh, aren't afraid to go out there and pitch ideas to, you know, uh, notable people. Um, after I had written the song, the idea came up, well, you know, maybe we should try to get a cameo from one of the Star Wars people in it, and instantly... You know, I thought, oh, Billy Dee Williams would be perfect for this. You know, we were talking about Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. Like, what are they doing right now? Maybe they'd be interested. But I was like, no, this is definitely Billy Dee Williams. He's got to be like the reverend, you know, in this crazy Ewok gospel church. And so um, we just uh, we just bugged his management, and they eventually they they thought it was funny and they liked the idea. So they decided, uh, you know, Billy Dee decided, you know, let's do it. Well, as exciting as it must have been to have the one and only Lando Calrissian involved, the Ewok Gospel was also featured at Star Wars Weekends at Disney World in Florida. How did that come to pass, and how exciting was it to see your video at a Star Wars event? That was amazing. I, um, I was, it was a, a 
month or two after the Evo Gospel video had come out on YouTube, and uh, I got a random uh, message through my YouTube channel um, from Warwick Davis, who, uh, as a lot of people know, uh, was played Wicked in, um, in uh, Return of the Jedi, as well as a lot of other uh, characters in some of George Lucas's movies. Um, and he just emailed me and said, hey, I'm hosting these Star Wars weekends at Disney World, and I'd like to, you know, I saw your video, I really love it, and I want to incorporate it into one of our shows. Uh, would that be possible? And I was like, of course. This is like the, <laughs> the coolest thing I could possibly imagine. So, um, so yeah, so I just gave my permission, and, and uh, my biggest regret, of course, is that I wasn't able to actually be there for um, that live show where he, he projected the video and sang along with it, which was basically, uh, I, I, I have a feeling that I can, if I never do anything notable again in my life, at least I have that. That's like, that's a pinnacle of my career, and I'd be happy with that, <laughs> to have Warwick Davis singing along to my Ewok gospel song. So, uh, so yeah, that was, that was a total trip. That yeah, would be a Star Wars geek's dream come true. Absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of geeks, there are simple Star Wars fans, and then there are the geeks. Aside from the very cool Ewok gospel, what else about yourself would you say characterizes you as a Star Wars geek? Well, um, hard to say. I mean, on the spectrum of, you know, fans uh, versus geeks, I would say I probably fall somewhere in the middle. Um, Star Wars has been a part of my life, you know, for my entire life since I was a little kid. Um, I think one of my first memories of life is, is seeing... Empire Strikes Back in the theater that my parents brought me to when I was three years old, uh, and that totally stuck with me. And I would say, like, as a, as a Star Wars fan and, and geek, if you want to call it that, you know, the thing that I engage in the most is probably collecting vintage Star Wars uh, action figures and, and the, you know, the Kenner sets, that sort of thing. That's, that's what I do the most. As far as, you know, compared to a lot of other Star Wars geeks, I'm probably not quite as geeky. Um, I, I've only read a smattering of the uh, Expanded Universe novels and so on, and I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the prequel trilogy. I, I would say I'm definitely more a uh, Star Wars purist in terms of the classic trilogy. I mean, I, that, that's what I would watch if I got an opportunity to watch a, a Star Wars movie on the weekend, you know? So, I don't know where I would fall in that in that whole spectrum, but Definitely not as, as geeky as some people, but my love for Star Wars is definitely solid. Well, one thing that I try to ask every guest on my show is this. If you could say or ask one thing uh, to George Lucas, what would that be? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, I actually, uh, it's funny, I actually got the opportunity to meet um, John Williams, um, of course the composer for the Star Wars trilogy, you know, a few years ago, and I approached him and I had all these great things I was going to say to him, um, and it just kind of came out like, I really like your work, sir. Um, so, uh, it would probably be something very similar to that if I met George Lucas, although if I was more articulate, I would probably say something like, um, I just want to thank you for, you know, years of, of enjoyment and the whole sort of this universe you created out of your head, um, and it's, you know, it's given me a lot of a lot of happiness uh, to, you know, enjoy the movies and, and everything surrounding it. Of course, if I, if I knew him better and maybe we were hanging out and we had had a few beers, I might ask him, George, why, why did we have to meet Boba Fett as a little kid? Why did we have to get his whole backstory? Why couldn't we just keep him a mystery? Why, George, why? That would be, that would probably be what I would ask him after a few beers. Well, thanks, Andrew, very much for being on the Dark Side Chats. Thanks for having me. If you have a YouTube account, be sure to subscribe to Andrew's YouTube page at youtube.com slash zilchzone. Until next time, may, may the Dark Side be with you always. Let's not forget about their big-hearted friends who were only one meter tall. I'm talking about the Ewoks. They were more than just cute, cuddly bears. Let's give some credit to the Ewoks. Without their help, the Alliance didn't have a prayer.